Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks Thursday. My name is Derek, and today I'm going to be going over something that I've had a lot of questions about, and that is how do I replace a connector? More specifically, how do I go about replacing a connector that is made of plastic? There are several ways to do this, but I'm going to give you my tips and tricks, and if you have any, leave them in the comments below. So let's get into the video. One of the things that you have to plan for when soldering is temperature control because certain temperatures can help you and certain temperatures can hurt you. And when it comes to plastic connectors, such as the one that I'm going to be showing you today, there is a threshold where if you exceed it, the plastic melts. So let's talk about it. The connector that I'm going to be working on today is the Digitizer FPC on a Nintendo Switch. And it's made up of two different plastics. One's black, one's white. And the white has a higher melting point than the black does. As you can see, the connector that I'm looking at has some damaged pins, and therefore it needs to be replaced in order to work. And one of the nice things, at least in removing the connectors, it doesn't matter if you melt the plastic, so you can heat it up to a temperature where the solder will melt quicker, and you'll be able to extract it much cleaner. Now one thing you want to add is flux. Flux will just help in the removal process. It isn't necessary in the removal, but it definitely is necessary when installing a new connector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my hot air rubric station, and I'm gonna heat it up. Got my temperature set around 380, which I could go higher than that if I really wanted to, but you can see that already the black plastic is starting to melt. Flux typically acts as a shield on some of the other FPC connectors and they won't melt even at a temperature where they would without flux. But when we do this, you can see that the black's melting, the white is not, but the solder is melting, so I'll be able to push it off. So I'm gonna wait until it's completely loose and then we'll slide it off the board. Now one of the things that I like to do in order to help the installation go smoothly is to alter the solder that's on the board. I'm going to be bringing it down to a 158 solder temperature mixed with the factory solder. So it's going to be a little higher than a 158, but it's definitely going to be lower than the factory, which means I don't have to apply as much heat in order to get it to melt. So here I've got my paste out. You can use solder wire if you'd like. I just prefer using solder paste because it's always on my desk. And I'm going to take the iron and you'll see that we'll just run over the solder and this will mix with the factory solder lift up some of the factory solder onto the iron and deposit a mixture of the 158 and the factory solder onto all of the different pads, basically creating nice little pillows of solder that'll make for the installation to go much smoother. Now the thermal mass behind this little logic board isn't as big as the thermal mass behind other devices, so it might not be this straightforward. Once I like what I see, I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol and we're going to clean up all of the flux, the, the remaining solder paste. And once that's clean, we're going to add some new flux, nice thin coating over all of the pins. Once I have that nice thin coating, I'm going to take my rework station. And this is where one of my tips will come into play. I'm going to lower my the temperature of my rework station until I find the area in which the solder will melt at the lowest temperature possible, where all of them, including the grounding pads, melt. And I'm gonna to continue to play with the temperature until I find that place where this particular board works with my particular rework station, because each rework station is gonna be different and you will find a different temperature on yours. So I'm gonna give uh, 30 seconds between each heating just to let the board cool down so that it's not biased towards a certain temperature. And once I found the temperature, the lowest temperature where the solder will still melt, I'll be able to then put the connector on. And in doing it this way, I won't melt the plastic. And you can double check that by putting the old connector under that temperature to see if it melts the plastic. We'll get out our new connector and we'll align it in the proper orientation. Now, if you really wanted to, you could have taken the solder down to a 138. 138, though, isn't as strong as a 158 or 183. And because this connector is going to see some action, I recommend not going all the way down to a 138. But if you're struggling at a 158, 
then by all means take it down. So as you can see, we've got no melting of the plastic. Got a little bit of flux on the black part of the connector there. So it might look like it's kind of getting shiny, but it's not actually melting. But the solder below you can see is. And as it does this, the whole connector is going to be able to drop into place. And it won't take long because I found that temperature where all of the solder will melt. But all of the solder will get on those pins and will have a nice connection without having to go in with the soldering iron after to do any extra work. Here holding it at an angle, we can take a look closely with the microscope and take a look at each one of the legs. And as you can see, each one of them has the solder pulling up to each pin, which means that we've got a good connection between all of the pads and the pins. You can also double check whether or not they're connected by taking a pair of tweezers and kind of nudging each one of the pins to see if it'll move or not. If it moves, then it's not connected. But I can clearly see that each one of these pins has a nice amount of solder holding it to the pad. And I did it without melting the connector. As you can see, the black plastic looks perfect. So does the white. The black would have melted first anyway. But now we have a completely new connector that'll work on this. And these tips and tricks that I shared with you work across basically any connector. And in fact, finding that temperature where things will, will melt, so you can even start from the low end and say, does this low temperature melt? No, and you can continue to work it up, will help you so that you don't overheat logic boards that are surrounded by underfilled components where you really can't heat it up too much. I look forward to seeing anything that you can add in the comments below. If you learned something, make sure to like the video, subscribe for more future videos as well, and we'll see you tomorrow for another Phone Fix Friday.